doing things differently or or delivering change. But in my view, the last week or 10 days, they hit new, new highs, new lows uh, of chaos in the way in which they dealt with the, the issue of students going back to school or not going back to school. And the real disappointment that you could feel, particularly amongst um, students, young people, children and their families, of, of uh, those that have special and additional needs. I mean, to me, that lack of organization, that absolute chaos is just unacceptable. Uh, it's, I've never seen the like of it. And uh, we've seen bad government, Pierce, you and I, I think we can agree, but I think yeah. this really uh, takes the risk. Of, and I, I only hope that they've used Christmas to cop themselves on a little bit and to realize when you are asking people to make extraordinary sacrifices, when people's lives have been turned upside down, people haven't seen work since, you know, last March, almost a year, many people out of work, you know, yeah. people stuck to the ceiling with work. The very least that you deserve is a government that's actually organized and a government that's serious about delivering on the big issues. I mean, like housing, for example. Yeah, like, and that's what people are saying. It's you know they 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 recognise the sacrifices that they're doing during this pandemic, and they expect the government to have their homework done, to have their act together. But they started this year just as bad as they were as they finished the year, just complete and utter chaos. And and you know people still want that change, that that attitude, that that demand for change is bigger than ever before. But we see when we look at Fianna Fáil that the change isn't something that they know because we know from work that Ono Prin done. Uh, over the Christmas period where he got a freedom of information request back, which shows that the most senior civil servant in the department was actually screaming out saying that the new initiative that Fianna Fáil were bringing forward in terms of housing would only do one thing, and that is push up prices, that it was being lobbied by the developers and the vulture funds because they wanted to increase their profits, not our words, but actually the general secretary of the Department of Public Expenditure. What did Fianna Fáil do when they got these warnings? They introduced the scheme. And this is just, this is the second scheme now that's going to push up prices. It's the developer party. It's not a party that's of interest. If you are trying to get on the property ladder, if you're trying to buy a, a two up, two down, if you want to, you know, start out in life and, and you're being fleeced with the, the high cost of, uh, of, of housing, uh, then, you know, we just see now and we have evidence of it that Fianna Fáil is pursuing policies that is making that worse. And we have the other scenario then for people who already have houses, Mary Lou, where, you know, their, their, their mortgages are in serious jeopardy. Uh, you know, the restrictions has caused, as we know, hundreds of thousands of people to, to, to lose their jobs. The European regulator uh, in December of la uh, last year, just last month, introduced re re guidelines that allows for banks to give mortgage holiday breaks so that interest wouldn't be charged, your payments, your credit wouldn't be affected. Uh, and Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil won't even ask the banks to bring forward those type of policies. So we've taken on board ourselves to write to all the banks, to write to the ministers and all the rest and continue to pursue this and lift a bit of the burden and not worry and anxiety off a lot of people. Uh, during this very difficult period for them. Absolutely. And I mean, um, if their commitment to developers and landlords hasn't changed, um, certainly the ability of this government appears to, to leak like a sieve hasn't changed, it seems, either. I mean, you'll remember um, the whole uh, controversy and outrage around Leo Varadkar leaking a, a highly confidential um, contract, a GP contract, and all of the the, the discussion and uh, un unease around that. And then, my God, th we have something worse, uh, which was the partial leaking of the uh, report on the mother and baby homes, which, to our mind, uh, is a breach of the 2004 Act. It's a criminal act. It should be investigated by the Gardaí. But maybe more than that, it it just represents something really, really indecent, doesn't it? To yeah. leap or to try and spin or to try and manage a story of just incredible heartbreak and brutality. You know, by the way, uh, watched by the state, on the watchful eye of the state and successful go successive governments led by Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael. I mean, that, that's how all of this happens. So, I just, I found that, I know we've talked about this before, we found that absolutely unbelievable. Uh, we'll have an apology tomorrow for the Taoiseach. I think we welcome that very much. Um, but we're also very clear that the apology uh, is only as valuable as the actions that are taken afterwards. I mean, 
certainly victims and survivors, their families, people who have been traumatized and so deeply wronged need recognition and compassion and respect and an apology. But they also need action. So certainly that's something that, that we are going to press. And I, I mean, the experience we have, Piers, is that on issues like that around people's rights, um, around housing, you know, changes, the big changes we need in policy, you really have to keep at it, don't you? It's it's, yeah. it's a case of chipping away every time. And that's what this stall session is going to look like as well, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And it has to be, it really has to be about change. And I think you're really, you know, you really hit the nail on the head there, Mary Lou, when you're talking about this, this, you know, leak, that it was more than that. It was about government trying to manage this issue. Uh, and and that's really hurtful. That's disgusting. It shouldn't have happened. Um, and, you know, but but the, that that's typical of, of, of this government, in, in, in my view. Um, tomorrow will be a very, very difficult day. But look, you know, um, the apology, as you said, has to be has to be more than that. It has to be substance. It has to be delivery beyond that. And much of the issues that we're going to be looking at um, beyond that tomorrow, tomorrow is, uh, for example, my own legislation that we've been working on for quite a period of time now, which is about the insurance ripoff in, in the state. We've already had one piece of legislation enacted. It's, some of it's been stalled for another couple of months, uh, but that will come into law. But this piece of legislation is about ending dual pricing. It's where insurance companies are gathering information to push up your renewal premiums we've been shown how uh, they're they're charging you on average about 40 percent more than they should be charging you if you continue to renew with the same customer so we're going to ban this practice of drafted legislation along with the office of parliamentary legal advisors uh, and i'm going to introduce it on on thursday uh, in the doll and we hope then to have it uh, debated at second stage and a vote in the doll uh, within the next number of weeks so that's just one of the commitments that we've given and we gave it it's this time last year Mary Lou, that you know the, the doll was being dissolved and one of the commitments we gave at that time was that we were going to uh, continue to pursue this to these type of issues uh, uh, to end the rip off in insurance um, practices. So uh, this this is always doing good in terms of that commitment. And there's much more that we want to do as well in, in relation to that issue. But this is a big piece of legislation for us. And hopefully if the public get behind it as they did the other piece of legislation, I think we can push the government to support this. Well, look, for what it's worth, I, I think there is no question, but that the people are behind your legislation, Piers. And I think people recognize very co correctly the amount of work that you have done on this issue. And I, I, it has to be said that above and beyond any other person in Irish political life, you have gone with this issue. And I have no doubt, uh, despite the, the government's uh, repeated attempts to delay things and deflect, you, you'll get it over, over the line. And it's a really important issue. I mean, an, another issue that um, the government has sought to push back on is the issue of payments for um, student nurses and midwives. Now, all of you will remember that there was a, a huge public outcry when people realized that you had students on wards holding the system together in the teeth of a pandemic, putting themselves in re really in the way of harm. And they weren't getting a shilling for their efforts in many, many cases. And that's not acceptable. That's simply not acceptable. Um, the government had a review. They've come up with this idea of a, a, a 100 euro allowance uh, for most of the students. That's not going to fly. So we're going to have a job there, Pearson, kind of pushing pushing that uh, agenda forward again. And, and similarly to, to other low paid workers, um, for example, those in the childcare sector, we haven't forgotten you either. We know these are really, really hard times for early education. Again, childcare workers put themselves in, in the line of danger and people in retail, likewise, in so many sectors. You know, the ironic thing is when yeah. the chips go down, it's not the highfalutin, the very, very well off the big, um, you know, corporates or the, the, the bankers or the vested interests. It's the, the, the workers like that who have our back and we're, we're hugely, hugely uh, appreciative. And carers as well, uh, Pierce. Because I'm conscious that uh, over 50% of the state's caring, uh, in fact, I think it's closer to 60%, is actually done by family carers. Mm -hmm. And I know that very often they feel very forgotten and many feel 
particularly in these times, quite isolated and left behind. And it, the fact that there wasn't a mention of them, for example, in the vaccination order of priority, I, I just I, I think it's important that we remind ourselves and say to people that we, we have that very, very much front and centre in our in our political agenda. And going back to the education piece, it was just devastating for so many carers and families for parents when they learned that their young children and young people would not be going back, not just to education, but to all of those supports that they need just to advance and, and to live their best life and to be to be happy. Um, so so that's going to be high up the agenda. The education area generally, Pierce, is, is yeah. something that we're going to be focusing on very strongly too. Yeah, look, and, and, and all of those the issues, as you rightly point out, in terms of low pay and precarious work and all of that. And look, you know, and, and, and the public are really behind our frontline workers. They know that the people behind the tills and the shops are putting themselves at risk. They know that the childcare workers that are, you know, opening the doors for frontline uh, workers and being able to care after their children are, 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 are putting themselves at risk in, in the middle of this pandemic. They know that 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 shouldn't nurses should be rewarded uh, instead of this type of, you know, you know, it's an insult. This hundred euro allowance uh, then suggests that that's a reward for 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 student works in the middle of the worst pandemic that we've seen, the worst virus rates in the world. Yet this is what they offer them. Yet what were the announcements this week? It was the general secretary of the Department of Health will get an eighty one thousand euro wage increase. Um, you know up to 292,000 euro, breaching their own guidelines in terms of the public sector. That's where the priority of government is at and they've got it all, all wrong. So you're 100% right in, in terms of, you know, the, 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 the value that carers place and we're hearing that, I'm hearing it myself in terms of, you know, the vaccination program. Look, if, if they get sick, that means the person they're caring for it will, will end up in a, in a residential setting that will put more pressure on, on the, her hospitals and her systems. And we needed just a bit of joined up thinking but the, look, the, what has been happening to parents, to teachers, to students over the last uh, week to 10 days uh, is not acceptable, in my view. Uh, this isn't a pandemic that has, uh, you know, come out of the blue in the last uh, couple of weeks. We've known now for the last nine months that it's here. It can, you know, it can have peaks and troughs uh, and the failure to plan in terms of education. And it's just not acceptable. Uh, you know, given, as we said earlier on, Mary Lou, the sacrifices that people are going through, the, the sacrifices uh, that, that parents are going through, that children are going through, that teenagers are going through. I have two teenagers at home, God, talk to me about homeschooling. Like you know, it's just it's just really really tough on 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 everybody. But they expect the government to get their act together. Last week we had three different positions from the government in relation to school openings. We still have a situation where children with additional needs are not in the classroom. You know, and this can happen if the proper consultation, if the proper planning uh, was in place. It's happening in 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 in, in the north. Um, and you know, there's no big issue about it because there has been planning there has been consultation and all the rest and I know that that was a, a crucifying blow uh, to parents of children with special needs because they see and they know and the evidence tells us that these are the children that will regress the most uh, and 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 the fact that you know, it was suggested that everything was okay they would be back in the classroom and then actually for it to unfold that the minister hadn't you know, discussed this with anybody, hadn't reached out to the partners, uh, and therefore the whole thing collapsed is, is is not acceptable. So, you know, I think Donahue Lira for us has been very much pointing the way in terms of what has to happen, what should have happened, but more importantly, what has to happen now in the next number of uh, uh, days to make sure that we get children back into a safe environment uh, in a classroom setting, and that we are um, particularly um, prioritising children with additional needs, but then also looking at uh, particularly the leaving and, and, and juniors yeah, and I mean, it's, it's for sure. And uh, Snap, I have two teenage uh, online learners in my house, so we see how we get on with that. But uh, we're really aware of the kind of the the challenge that is for all of us. But uh, you know, if if you if you don't have access to the technology, you know, if you if your household is under pressure, if you have additional needs, if you're struggling, if your mental health is true, all of these are factors and certainly we'll be pursuing answers on the leaving cert and the junior cert because we need a plan. There has to be a plan A, there has to be a plan B, there has to be common sense, there has to be proper consultation. 
Uh, one of the other things that we we have put front and centre, and this I suppose comes to light really brightly because of the the COVID emergency now, and the numbers are so high north and south, uh, is the issue of an all island approach. Uh, in the first instance, and with most immediacy in terms of COVID, and you know we've made this argument. I know that uh, people are have heard us say it time and again. We, we haven't had success yet with the government, but we are going to keep pressing that and uh, not least in the area of international travel, um, because we believe that we need to now mobilize and do everything that we can to keep our people as safe as we can and to make sure that when we're dealing with record, the highest numbers now we're told uh, in the world. I mean, it's astonishing that at, at the very least, we're not importing more trouble. Um, so that means testing, a test, a negative test when you land in Ireland, and second mandatory test. And it also means proper quarantine that's actually enforceable. So uh, we're pressing those issues. It's, it's points that we've made repeatedly, as you know, Pierce in the executive, Michelle and the team have been leading the charge on that. Um, but it just makes so much sense. It just makes sense for us to operate on an all Ireland basis. So we're going to have a busy number of weeks ahead of us. Um, we're in there uh, standing up for all of you. Um, we absolutely are committed to delivering on all of the all of the change that we discussed in the last election. And we know that you haven't given up on that change. And listen, neither have we, nor will we. Uh, Sinn Féin is in there standing up for communities and families acting constructively, acting cooperatively where we can, but giving no quarter where there is uh, any sense that the, the government is uh, falling short of what you and your families need and expect in these very difficult times. So Piers, I will see you in the morning.